2015 is quickly becoming one of those years that us race fans would rather forget. No matter what style of racing you're into, it always seems to be you're always hearing about a crazy crash. Strange things going on. Unbelievable crashes. Even far imaginable than ever that than anything you could have ever seen. And worse than that, we are now once again in the in the realm of bad injuries and even fatalities. In fact, in August of 2015 alone, and even at this point a month and a half ago, starting in mid-July, there's already been a minimum of four major incidents, both on and off the track. Now, granted, we can't do anything about losing Buddy Baker to cancer or Dalton Milliken in a motorcycle wreck. But the other two major events that have happened, the last two major things to happen on the track, those two fatalities actually could have been prevented. If the sanctioning bodies of all these auto racing series would have been proactive instead of, for the umpteenth time, reactive. Why is it you guys always want to make a safety change after someone dies? I don't get it. And for some reason, this has happened way too much over the last quarter of a century. You guys never seem to want to do anything. No matter what the series is, what your racing discipline, or whatever. You guys don't want to fix anything until something happens. That's always seems to be the case. Hmm, we should put chicanes here, should we? No, we shouldn't do that. And all of a sudden, Formula One loses one of its biggest champions. This could have been prevented with chicanes and all that stuff, with what happened the day prior, with someone else dying. No, it took a legend dying for you guys to try and fix everything. Formula One. Oh no, three young guns dying? Hmm, it's all coincidence. Well, we shouldn't do anything about it. Oh my god, Dale Earnhardt died! We gotta do something! Really, NASCAR? And don't even get me started on the Boosh Country disaster. And if you know what Boosh Country is, congratulations. And in this case, I'm referring to you, IndyCar. And once again, you're in the spotlight. Because of not what happened in 2011, but what happened this week. And Formula One, you're not out of the woods either. Because you had an incident last year that reverberated last month. That's also connected to this. Time and time again. You racing series that have had open cockpits. Mainly, the most notable being Formula One and IndyCar. And all the racing series like that. Formula E, Formula 3000, Indy Lights, all that stuff. You guys have been guilty of the open cockpit. Now, even though people know me as a traditionalist... People who know me well also know me 
for being an advocate for safety. Heck, look at my rant during my WTF Speed Weeks 2015 video when I questioned why Daytona did not have a safer barrier on the inside wall. Right, Kyle Bush? And now, there's a problem. Because of how the FIA conducted their race in Japan in 2014, and how ridiculous that event went, let alone no cockpit shield again, a driver by the name of Jules Bianchi lost his life last month. And then... More disturbingly, there was an incident at Pocono, where the race leader crashed out, and debris from the crashed car hit the head of another racer named Justin Wilson, who died the next day. It's now getting to the point where it's time for us to go from open cockpit to closed cockpit. This mayhem's gonna stop. You racing series always want to be reactive to something. Now's the time to react as per usual. And there's only one way to do it. All you guys that have open cockpits, it's time to close them. We need closed cockpit shields. And we're not asking anymore. We're demanding. We don't go to these race events to see people die. We want to see them race. Okay? Just want to make sure you guys know that. And I'm also sick and tired of all the ridiculous excuses that says, oh, that's not going to work and all that stuff. Like the FIA tried when Jules Bianchi died. In fact, look at the highlighted sentences in this picture. It would not have been possible to mitigate Bianchi's injuries through changes to the cockpit design. A closed cockpit would not have averted Bianchi's head injuries. Excuse me, how would you possibly know that? Do you think that an open cockpit is actually safe for the drivers? Uh, no, it's not, realistically. And do not say that, oh, we'll not help them in the case of a fire. They could be trapped and burned and all that stuff. Because you have the fire retardant policy since... Way back in the 70s. And I've seen video of a Formula One driver who was unconscious in a car and his car was burning around him. He wasn't burned. So you can't make that excuse. And now let's get into the point where we need these. It's not a one thing. It's not a, okay, maybe more than like a thing. It's a now thing. And once again, you're going to have to re be reactive to do it. Because you guys won't do it any other way. In fact, I have uh, looked up IndyCar cockpit shields. And found a couple of pictures that drew my attention. Here's a Formula One picture that came up. Nice design. Looks pretty cool. Very protective of the drivers. And there's also one for IndyCar. Uh, this is someone's design that I found on Google, so that's great. Very nice design. We need these. And I have also have a... Uh, I also have a uh, picture here. That would show my rendering of what a cockpit shield would be like. Don't, don't mind the crappy drawing of the IndyCar, because I, I really can't draw one. 
I bear with stock cars, but the cockpit shield here would be designed to protect the driver. The vents would be for air if you guys are worried about that and you can't do anything to help the car that way. But then as I was thinking about it, something caught my attention. Let me show you edited pictures that I made on these things. Here are the drivers without the cockpit shields. Here's the picture of the drivers with the outline of what the cockpit shields would do. And there is the driver's heads being covered by the shields. Less chance of a major disaster going on. Here's a better view, an onboard. Now with this onboard, you can clearly see the driver. And you can see by the outline where the cockpit shield would go. And there's the shield in progress protecting the driver. There's no doubt about it at this point. You racing series that have the open cockpits, it's time to clam them. The mayhem's going to stop. We've been asking this for years. And now, it's time for you guys to do it. Before another disaster strikes. In fact, I have an idea. One that could actually work well. Because the NHRA and Top Fuel actually has a few cars with the cockpit shields. They call them capsules, but that's the... Uh, thing they go by. If you watch the NHRA in the top fuel division, you will notice that the Don Schumacher racing cars, as well as Brittany Force's car, has the cockpit shield. Now, they call it capsules, but it works pretty well. It's a great safety standard. It would help in the case of an explosion or a crash. Let me tell you how that came to be, realistically. Before mid-2004, there were just a bunch of bars on the back of the car that kind of resembled a tic-tac-toe board. And then one day at Gateway, there was a crash, and a piece of debris went through one of the holes and hit the driver's head. The driver, Daryl Russell, died as a result of that. After that event... A bunch of drivers started making up a shield for the back of the area. And then, sometime later on down the road, Don Schumacher Racing went to the next step, creating their own little safety innovation with a cockpit shield. They call them a capsule, I know, but you understand what I mean here. Now, if you guys at IndyCar and Formula One and all you other open wheel racing series with the open cockpits and any other racing series that has an open cockpit, I know that some of the um, sports car series has open cockpit cars. You might need them, and I highly recommend it because it's definitely the safer option. If you want to go to the NHRA to get some help involved in all that stuff with the... Uh, Basically a safety renovation thing about how to do it for your cars. Okay then, just do that. But this ridiculousness of people dying because you guys won't have cockpit shields, it's going to end. And it is going to end. Before someone else dies. And then race fans like me are upset again. Let me remind you guys of something. You guys are known as forms of open wheel racing, not open cockpit racing. It's time to clam them up. The closed cockpits, the cockpit shields, that's what we need to protect the drivers. And we need them now. We're not going to have another disaster happen. Not like the one that took Jules. 
not like the one that took Justin. And maybe if the cockpit shield existed even before that, a few others. In fact, I also believe that if the cockpit shield existed prior to the beginning of the 2011 season, that Dan Weldon would still be with us. I know some of you may not think that. And my boyfriend off camera is saying, no, I see you. But anyway, it's pretty obvious what has to be done. We need the cockpit shields before more drivers get more head injuries and either have to sit out for a while, might have their career end, or even die. In fact, referencing my boyfriend, I recall a little incident where one of your drivers got injured by a minor piece of debris last year in Indianapolis. <laughs> He's telling me to shut it, but he knows I'm right. The James Hinchcliffe incident of 2014. Where he suffered a concussion and missed a few races. Yes, he missed a few races. No, he didn't. He only missed practice for the Indy 500, but he didn't miss a single race last year. You sure? Yes. I heard that. <laughs> but anyway... This ridiculousness is going to end. We need the closed cockpit shields, and we need them now, before another disaster strikes. And you guys either try to delay it or be reactive again. No more reaction. It's time for action. You want to know? We don't go to these events to see people die. We go to these events to see them race and to be safe. Do it for your racers. Do it for the racers that we've lost. Do it for everyone. Do it for safety state. And do it knowing that this is the best thing possible for everyone. More of the drama, less of the trauma. And that's my final answer.